Want to find the solution to dry muffins, leaky pie crusts, and flavorless breads? Then it's time for Baking Measures 101. Let me introduce you to my first secret ingredient, the kitchen scale. I have two types here, a regular scale and the tea scale. If you are new to weighing your ingredients, start with a regular scale. It works for all measurements that are not completely tiny. Basically, it's a replacement for measuring cups. And the tea scale is a replacement for measuring spoons. There is no math involved with scales. They all have a tear or zero button. So you can set any ball on top, zero it out, and add your ingredients. Most scales let you choose the measurement unit. So if your recipe is in grams, set it to grams. And if it's in ounces, set it to ounces. The reason small quantities like salt are usually given in grams is to avoid hard to read fractions. One gram is easier to read and write than 0.035 of an ounce. Of course, you can weigh all your ingredients, but the one that needs weighing the most is flour. In the US, most people use dry measuring cups for flour. Let's see how well that works. Here is one cup of flour. It weighs 164 grams. And here is another cup of flour. And it weighs 138 grams. Flour is a powder, so it's compressible. Here is how the first cup was measured. <laughs> Don't laugh, I used to measure that way at some point. That's the wrong way, kids. And here is how the second cup was measured. I moved the flour into the container, fluffed it up, scooped it gently, and leveled. That's the right way. Let's do it again the right way to see how well that works. 149 grams. Hmm. Last time I got 138 grams, so even the right way is not that accurate. How much flour you get when measuring with cups can vary by as much as 20%, depending on the container, the cup, how much you stir, and the humidity conditions. But what if your grandma didn't write you her chocolate chip cookie recipe in ounces? Or what if your favorite magazine is stuck in the dark ages using cups? In cases like that, assume that one cup of all-purpose flour equals 5 ounces, or 142 grams. And those chocolate chip cookies will come out perfect every time. Now, let's talk about flavor problems. When the baked goods are lacking in flavor, people usually blame it on the quality of butter, flour, or eggs. But the real culprit is usually the wrong amount of salt. If your baking recipe does not specify the salt type, they mean table salt. The difference between salt types can be huge. For example, half teaspoon of table salt equals one teaspoon of diamond crystal kosher salt. The difference between measuring spoons can also be huge. This is sold as one teaspoon in the US, and this is also sold as one teaspoon. Let's see how similar they are. <laughs> I know I spilled a bit, but we're not even close here. So make sure to buy deep round teaspoons or get yourself a tea scale. One teaspoon of table salt weighs 5.7 grams. Liquids can be weighed but can also be measured by volume, since they are not compressible. Set a liquid measuring cup on a level surface and make sure the bottom of the meniscus is at the line to which you are measuring. Also, make sure your eyes are level with that line, or it will be hard to judge the amount. For more accurately measured advice, don't forget to subscribe to Helen's Kitchen channel. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.